And the whole world has changed a whole lot since then through the experience of COVID, of inflation that ran away from us, Dr. Fauci, and, and all sorts of things that none of us ever anticipated. And yet, that was three years ago when we last met. Here we are in November of 2022, and we're not older. We've just ripened to perfection. So here we are. <laughs> Looking out at it, it's a lot of perfection right here in the room. It's very good. Uh, I'd like to spend just a second introducing you to the, the four or five people who have worked to get us to resuscitate our organization. And uh, Erica Garahan is walking around back there. She's our secretary. She's she represents continuity over the, the dark years in between 2019 and now. And, uh, and also Betty Fritz is one of our newer members. Where is Betty? She's right here. She's, she's, the, she's the jack of all trades and she knows everybody, so that's a big help too. Well, I'm the ornery one who rides a, rides a broom. Oh, that's right. She has a really long handle broom. That's right. And then Tim Mullins has been uh, filming the programs here for a number of years and has been very active in the historical society. So, so he, he represents the other part of continuity. <laughs> and then there's, then there's Dave Oaks, uh, wherever he turned out to be. Is he asleep again? Oh, he's back, way back there. <laughs> that Dave Oaks and, and Jane Scott and I have worked uh, collectively on getting programs started and going, so we think we got the next three or four months covered with people who can tell us things that we probably don't know or that we forgot. So anyway, those are the people who have formed a committee, a task force, a common interest. We don't know exactly what we are, but that's 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 how we got to where we are here today. <laughs> One, one, one thing I want to be sure we take care of the paperwork. Uh, Erica, the secretary. A, a good looking group. What group is this? The Kingsport Historical Society. This, this is history right here. This is history. I see a lot of history in this room. <laughs> You're Ken Marsh, aren't you? I was the last time I looked at my driver's license. Well, I thought I recognized you. You know, he's outspoken and outgoing, but now he wasn't always that way. He used to be so shy, he'd go in the closet to change his mind. <laughs> I look around, I see a couple other people I know. I see uh, Dave Oaks back there. You know, Dave wasn't always that good looking. When he was born, he was so ugly, the doctor slapped his mother. <laughs> and I see the Wrights back there, Hunter and Sylvia. You know, they got married for better or worse. He couldn't have done no better, and she couldn't have done no worse. <laughs> and I see Jane Scott. Isn't she pretty? She looks so good. She was at the beauty shop for five hours. That was just for the estimate. 
Most of you folks I see in this room, I know because you knew my mother, Pearl. And uh, she had a long relationship and friendship with a lot of you folks. Uh, we grew up in a little old bitty small town. It was so small, we didn't even have a town drunk. We had to take turns. <laughs> but I'm her little girl, Cheryl. And she wants you to know that now, Pearl, she didn't drink. But sometimes she'd put gin in her steam iron. She'd iron three, four fifths a day. <laughs> All joking aside, folks, um, I'm happy to be here this morning to give you a history and a background on my mother, Pearl, who was also known as Peggy Turner. She would be thrilled to know that you consider her a part of Kingsport history. Some of you have seen Pearl before. A show of hands. How many people knew Pearl, saw Pearl? I figured there would be, be several, and that makes me happy. For those of you that have not had the pleasure of seeing Pearl, I'm going to set the stage for you. Let's assume that you're at a company dinner, a holiday party, dressed up, an awards dinner, or maybe even a rehearsal dinner for a wedding. The, uh, the guest speaker gets up, take his turn at the podium. When in the back of the room, a waitress walks in with a big tray, She's clearing dishes, and she walks over and says, could you pass me your plate? You didn't eat all your greens. You've got to eat your greens. And then people would look at her like she was crazy. And that, for some people, was the best part. And then she would begin with the guest speaker just much like we just did, where they had gotten together a long time before and picked out people in the audience to share jokes and humor with about and so she began, and she would work her way to the front, and they would, uh, they would share stories and begin laughing at each other, about each other, and sharing things that make us not take ourselves so seriously. <sighs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. It did not take long before the whole room was roaring with laughter. For those of you who don't know much about Pearl, she was a character created by Peggy with the sole purpose of making people <coughs> laugh. Pearl got her start early when Peggy started her career downtown. It was back in the 1980s. When preparing for today, I called on a few of Pearl's old friends, one of which was Bill Dudney that worked at then First Tennessee Bank. And one of his favorite stories was when Norman Sobel had a business down the street and he came in with Peggy, or so they thought. And Peggy had not, Pearl had not made much of an appearance at that time. And they went into the bank and there was a new president that they brought in from Memphis. Big guy, all these great plans, sophisticated, educated. And Norman introduces Peggy and Pearl comes out. <laughs> Said she needed a loan and they didn't have no collateral. And Bill Dudney still to this day remembers that guy's face. <laughs> they broke him in good. And <laughs> for you to look around the room and find the people who could, who hadn't seen her, because you could tell right away. Lots of times people would go to get up, and somebody next to him would go, "Just wait, just wait." <laughs> and I mentioned Norman Sobel. I know a lot of you know Norman, and Debbie Wagner reminded me of this when I called her. You know, Norman didn't celebrate Christmas was something that, that he participated in. But every year on Christmas Eve, he'd stand around the cash register singing, what a friend we have in Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Another good friend of Pearl that knew her when he was a young man and, and for a very long time is Jeff Fleming. And Jeff recalls a state convention that they had in Kingsport. And for... A long time they prepared trying to put their best foot forward where can we take these folks to showcase the the best things about Kingsport and our history and our plans and all these things and at the end of the convention they had a dinner at Ridgefields and here they were trying to make a good impression and in walks Pearl and so they do their jokes and they do their routine Jeff said that their whole purpose there was to make a memorable event and they did that because people talked about it and talked about it and talked about it. Um, I'll share this with you because it, it's funny. When we got older in our household, uh, she would start stories, and all the best ones started, well, we had a glass of wine, and then 
And so um, Jeff recalled the time he was in the back right before she started a program, and he saw her take take a glass of wine and drink it down real quick, and she said a little shot of courage in a bottle. And that's how she was. She was as nervous the first time as she was the last time. Um, but Pearl's character grew and grew. She evolved. Um, and she ended up probably doing over 600 programs in her lifetime. Uh, at the end of each performance, she had on a waitress, uh, waitress uniform and an apron, and she wore this kind of red wig. Uh, it wasn't bright red, it was a darker red. But at the end of each performance, she'd go out of the room, take a breath, collect herself, and take off her wig, and she'd come back in. And she thanked the people for allowing her to be there. And she hoped that they'd enjoyed the company and the time together and the laughs. And she would say, the Proverbs tell us that a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. And that was her goal, is to just make people happy and to laugh. Um, for me, Pearl was a part of everyday life. The fun and the laughter was in our home. Peggy, Lee, Peggy continually collected jokes everywhere she went. She'd write something down. When she passed away, we found notes in coat pockets and in her purse and her pocketbook where she jotted down a one-liner or the, the ending to a joke. And so she spent a lot of time collecting pearl jokes and she could remember them and she could call them back at a moment's notice. And that was her special gift, one of them, was her gift of timing. She knew just the right thing to say to the right people at the right time to make you feel good about yourself. I truly believe she was a person that when you saw her, you felt better when you went away. Even if you agreed to disagree, and she disagreed with a lot, but she made you feel happy and, and a value. And so, yes, she had a, many certain gifts. Um, Peggy was my mother. Um, she grew up Peggy Maddox here in Kingsport, went to Dobbins Bennett High School, her first job was working in the jewelry department at Dobbins Taylor. Uh, she later worked for the glass company. We had pictures of her at the switchboard. Can you imagine her answering the phone all the time? <laughs> then she met my father, Bob Turner. They were married and spent a small stint of time in Rochester at Eastman, then moved back to Kingsport where they lived the rest of their lives. Uh, when we grew up, we grew up in Colonial Heights and she stayed home to raise her family and did a lot of volunteer work. I remember she was the nurse in the clinic where I was in elementary school, so I could never fake being sick. <laughs> when the oldest of her ch three children, I have two brothers, my brother Rob and my brother David, uh, when they went to college, she needed something to do. So she came upon a job at a new organization called the Downtown Kingsport Association. She started as an office assistant, uh, event planner, and over the course of her career, she grew. She went back to college. She graduated from Tusculum as an adult and then eventually took the role of the executive director. And notably, her slogan was, I love this place. She used it because she really did love Kingsport and this place and the people here. After retirement, for her, which did not last long, she ran for and was elected to the BMA. I think Ken worked with her and Valerie and lots of people worked with her. She passed away in 1998, and it makes me proud to know that here we are, 24 years later, still telling Peggy Turner stories. So thank you for allowing me that privilege. A little bit about myself. Uh, I grew up Cindy Turner, I'm Cindy Lemons. My husband David and I will celebrate our 21st anniversary tomorrow. Looking okay. forward to that. Yay. Yes, you all know, it, that's an accomplishment. <laughs> um, but um, I have two children. I have a son, uh, Wells, that's 23. I have a daughter, Lauren, that's a senior at Dobbins Bennett High School. And um, I work at the Blake, the assisted living out towards Colonial Heights up on the hill. So I want to take this opportunity to invite your group to come up. We would love to have you come. So your planning crew, if you want to come and have coffee and up there sometime, just a different place to meet, we'd love to have you. Um, I did want to take a minute to open the floor to see if anybody had a Pearl story they wanted to share. I know um, some of you worked with her on different things. Does anybody have a Pearl story or a joke they want to share? <coughs> Here's a, here's a joke, but it's not a pearl one. It's, Go ahead. It's current. 
So if somebody comes up to you and all the political controversy and asks, are you part of the cancel culture or the woke culture? At my age, I'm part of the nap culture. <laughs> <laughs> the nap culture, I like it. Yes, sir. Pearl came and did our 25th class reunion at Ridgefields. And when she, most of the people in my class had moved away and hadn't been here in 25 years. They didn't know who she was. Well, she came out, out in her little uniform and was mouthing off sort of the way you did. Somebody said, I wonder if she's got a gun. I believe her. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then she said, uh, well, there sits Mr. and Ms. Toby Hale over there. Uh, Mr. Hale bought him a new bed this week. Bought him a water bed. Ms. Hale calls it the Dead Sea. <laughs> Toby hasn't been back to Kingsport yet, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Jeff? So, uh, not exactly Pearl's story, but Peggy's story. And it's hard to you know, separate, separate the two. But, you know, she was the doggedly determined downtown director. And she was always looking for angles to raise money to do things downtown. And, um, I remember sitting there talking to her one day, and, and she said, well, I've got to get somebody to sponsor these flowers in Church Circle. And she goes, we're going to plant geraniums. And I'm going to go ask Joe Everly for the money. We're going to call them the Joe Rains. <laughs> so, so Joe had to sponsor him until whenever she was tired of planting Joe Rains. And then she decided she wanted big angels um, mounted on the streetlights around Church Circle. And she said, I'm going to talk to Harold Childers because they're going to be the Harold Angels. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that one either. <laughs> and then the other thing, I guess when I was in, uh, I was in planning, I got a call from the mayor's office or city manager's office, whatever, and she had just moved to Longview Street. Do you remember what your phone number was? I do. I remember the house number and the phone number, but go ahead. They weren't always the same. No. <coughs> called and said I want my phone number and my house number to match. She never did explain why. But <laughs> well they lived on the corner of Longview Street and Longview Lane and the whole street is it's just a small cul-de-sac and the whole street the numbers are kind of all they're not in a specific order and they lived at 1729 and she wanted it to be 1727 and she wanted the phone number 24717. I think they got the phone number and she wanted her house number to match. And I don't know that anybody else other than her would have even called to ask, but she did and they changed it. Of course, that was, that was 30, 30 or 40 years ago, so I don't know. Yeah. yeah, but she had a knack of talking you into something you didn't even know you wanted to do. Yeah. Um, so, also, when Pearl would come, she would sometimes find a gentleman in the room that she hadn't seen in a long time. And she'd say, oh, there you are. And he'd walk, she'd walk over and with her red lipstick, kiss him on the forehead. And I've missed you. I haven't seen you. We, you, you're, you used to visit us at the Tender Touch Massage Parlor. And she'd say, darling, did we rub you the wrong way? <laughs> and much as Pearl evolved, so did Gloria. And Gloria had fishnet stockings and a black dress and glitter makeup and big hair. And um, she would meet people at the airport when they'd come in from a long trip. She and her, uh, one of her friends, they'd go out. And sometimes Gloria would make a, make a, a presentation or and she had certificates made up. And one of my favorite pictures that we have is a picture that... Many of the downtown folks, I can't name them all right off, but uh, Dennis Phillips and uh, Jim Wells, I remember him. They all went and found an old trailer, and they lined up outside and had their wallets open. And that was, you know, those kind of laughing, joking things are the things that um, really, and of course, of course, Gloria, she didn't come out as much, quite as much. But I remember when my mother passed away, we were at the funeral, and one of the funniest things, you know, talk about timing, and we had, Dr. Mosry was there, Jim Mosry. And it was one of those moments where it was just, nobody knew what to say. And he said, well, I've been thinking about this. And when Peggy died, I'm pretty sure she made it into heaven. And Pearl got in, but I'm not sure about Gloria. <laughs> and so 
humor is just such a big part of our lives and to have that knack and to keep jokes in your pocket or in your mind is a, is a gift and so um, does anybody else have anything they yeah you know I, I get the Tennessee Municipal League is made up of officials all the way across the state of Tennessee we were able to get the meeting in Johnson City one year and Kingsport volunteered to be the host for a dinner one evening and so they loaded all the buses and we went to Allendale to the Allendale barn and we had a barbecue meeting at our uh, uh, mill. Well, nobody knew Peggy. I mean, she was totally innocent to all this group of people from across Tennessee. And so we started serving the barbecue and then she came out and was just you know, work the crowd, just start even doing the things that a waitress would do. Well, she picked on one man and she led into him about, aren't you gonna eat all your beans? Aren't you gonna eat, finish your barbecue? Why don't you come up to East Tennessee for if you're not gonna eat our East Tennessee food? I mean, the guy was totally humiliated. <laughs> he, he didn't know what the hell And uh, so, <laughs> The impressive municipal that came up and said, Hunter, what have you, where did you find this lady? I mean, this is embarrassing to a whole group of us <laughs> across Tennessee. Well, finally, we had to introduce Peggy and tell her, tell them that she was a fixture here in the city of Kingston. <laughs> and she did these routines all across the town and other places. I didn't, for Many years after, or a few years after that, I would go and people would come up and say, is that waitress still in Kingsport? <laughs> 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 that whole trip, that's the only thing I really remember about each episode. <laughs> but I mean, that was, she just did a marvelous show and introduced a lot of people to Kingsport in an unusual way. Right. But again, <laughs> they put East Tennessee on sort of on the map is a unique place to go to uh, enjoy uh, activities that you would have in the type of that meeting that you would have with a, that like we did. But she was a dream for Kingsville. Well, thank you for saying that. You reminded me one of the jokes when she would come in and the guy would say, do you mind? You know, we can't have you doing this. And she said, now I can't get fired. I don't have no fire insurance. <laughs> <laughs> so these jokes come back to me and I appreciate the, the walk down the walk down memory lane. I, um, I know you're here to also talk about the history of the Survivors Club, so I'll turn it back over to Ken. But I was... I grew up in downtown Kingston. I think I've been in the basement of half the places down on Center Street and wrapped presents at Dobbins Taylor and all kinds of things. But um, I, I love Kingsport as well. But I remember the Survivors Club when it started. I used to work at Caddy's Corner. Later on, I bought it from Caddy. But I remember the folks coming in and listening to the stories of the folks that would come down and give presentations. And I hope I'm not overstepping what you were going to say, but my father used to... He retired, I think, to be Peggy's assistant, but he'd stand in the back corner with the, at the time, a VHS recorder and record this, the speakers, and I think they're on file at the library in the archives if you all ever want to go go look at them or check them out. And all. They're available. They're, yep, available to rent. So I'm going to turn it back over to Kim. Well, uh, you know, you've, you've had a sampling of, of Pearl. It's really Pearl is spelled P-U-R-L. That's the East Tennessee spelling of Pearl. But uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to read you some excerpts from a report. I guess it's kind of a mini history of the Survivors Club in, back in 2017. And, and I'll have to, uh, to pull it up here. And, and while I'm pulling it up, you, it may be a surprise to most of you folks, but do you realize that the very first computer was in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve? <laughs> Obviously it was an apple. <laughs> it had very, very limited memory. As a matter of fact, it had one bite, one bite. <laughs> and when it crashed, everything came to a stop. 
and it hadn't changed, so it's, it's right now, right here in my computer. I've already lost the page. So, so you never know about these things. And see, it's, it, it, it disappeared right then. And so bear with me just a moment. Okay, here we are. Uh, and, and like I say, this is an abbreviated version, but the Survivors Club was formed by Peggy Turner and Mac Riddle in 1988, 34 years ago. It initially began as a group of individuals, 70 or older, who met in a popular downtown meeting restaurant, Caddy's Corner. Most of you people probably remember Caddy's Corner. and talked about community news, politics, the good old days, things like that. Someone came up with the idea that we ought to have a club. So the Survivors Club was the logical choice and that name was suggested by Jim Edwards. He said, we're all just survivors, according to Nancy Garrett, who served as the group's coordinator. This group has survived the Great Depression and World War II, and they felt they had earned the title of survivors. So I guess we've got a new title, we're COVID and such and such as that. <laughs> So the Kingsport Survivors Club was born, and, and here are the charter's members. And I'm going to ask, ask for the first two or three, and just hold up your hand if you knew this, this person. Okay, the first person on the list, no, no particular order, is Jim Edwards. How many of you knew Jim Edwards? Okay, all right. And the next person on the list was Jitney Blankenbecker. And even more, Jitney was around a long time. Tom Gannaway. Okay. Uh, Caddy Harrison, Caddy's Corner, remember? Uh, Olin Pierce, Mac Riddle, Matt Riddle was kind of a legend in, in the community, okay? Uh, Claire H. Robinson, Robertson, Robertson, Charlie Brooks Jr., right? Uh, Harry B.A. Horde, you know, Tennessee Ernie's relative. Uh, John Harrison, Russ Miles, Dr. Shelton Reed, Roscoe Ritchie, and Barbara Yancey. And Peggy Turner was the coordinator of that group. They held their first meeting uh, in the First Presbyterian Church, the church circle, and met there for a number of years. And he had to be 70 years old to be in the group. Peggy coordinated the meeting, and like uh, Cindy said, Bob, her father uh, uh, filled in when she wasn't able to attend. And when, when Peggy passed away, Barbara Goodlett took over and she passed the duties on to Nancy Garrett. These are all people that old time Kingsport folks certainly would know. Uh, and then when Nancy stepped down, Ellick Anderson stepped up and Ellick was my across the street neighbor in 1950 in White City. And you know, I thought he was the old man. He was two years older than I was. <laughs> <laughs> he was ancient. And then along came uh, Alec Looney, which I went to school with and known most of all my life. And those are the people who brought the Survivors Club, renamed the Kingsport Historical Society in 2013, uh, to the end of the active situation and the hiatus of the three years we've just come through. Uh, without, uh, I, I certainly don't want to mistreat anybody here, I want to say that the Chamber has been very, very helpful in helping us go along back then and resuscitate us here we are now. We're, we're, we're here now, it's kind of the retread. We've got another 10,000 miles on the wheels now that we've got to retread on the program and hopefully we'll be able to carry this forward for a lot of years uh, ahead, including a lot of input from you people right here in the room. Uh, I'm right here to elevate. As has already been mentioned, all the programs that we think we've had over all these 34 years have been videotaped and Tim is currently videotaping this one and they're available through the library if you want to check one out and take it home and, and enjoy seeing what people were doing 10 years, 20 years, even 30 years ago. If you're interested, if you're not a member of the club already and are interested in the Kingsport Soil Society, Alicia has got uh, everything you need. The thing she needs is money and information, and you've got the money and the information, so it's a good deal. Well, no, it's a two-way deal. Uh, just, just looking forward. Here we are. Uh, 
are there any other questions and answers about Pearl? You know, Pearl, Pearl was a fixture. Let, let me tell you one little quick story myself. I lived in Texas for 14 years between 1978 and 1992. And I came up here one time for some sort of, I think it was a safety rewards meeting that was being held at the Ridgefields uh, Ballroom. <clears throat> and George Tribune was presiding. George was one of the vice presidents at Eastman. And he was standing up in front of the room at the podium talking about whatever the subject was. And I was sitting in the very back of the room, uh, hadn't been up here for something like that probably in 10 years. And all of a sudden, there was this god awful crash. And I turned around, and here is this woman on her hands and knees, and there's a tray, and there's silverware, and there's two or three metal something and others scattered all around, and she starts talking pearl. And I thought, this is terrible. <laughs> and, and George Tribune, you know, that shock, just like I did apparently. It, it was probably a minute or two before it occurred to me, this was a put up deal. She was that effective at carrying that off. So a lot of us saw it, experienced it, or enjoyed it. Anyway, uh, we're glad everybody's here today. Uh, we hope we'll see all your smiling faces at our December meeting, which will be the 14th of December, which is the second Wednesday in December because the third Wednesday would be essentially Christmas and we wouldn't want to do that. And the program next month will be the history of the Santa train brought to you by Santa himself. So, I mean, if you want to get close to Santa, be sure you come back next month because that's in the plan. Yes, ma'am. Do you still have to be 70 to join house? <laughs> <laughs> We, 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 we had a meeting and we just we determined that maturity was the only criteria. Okay. So at this point, uh, as long as it's real American money, uh, we'll take your $10 uh, regardless of how young you are. So uh, we, we hope that over time we'll be able to expand this group and we look to all of you folks to help us with programs coming forward. Uh, like I say, next month is Santa Claus with Santa Claus, and then we take a real different turn in January with the history of the Melungeons. And uh, that's a subject that has been a great mystery for a lot of years, but in more recent times with DNA and so forth, a lot of the mystery has taken, uh, been taken out of it, and we really do know the history now. So uh, this is the kinds of programs we expect to be having. You know, in, in, in February, we'll be having a program by, by uh, just Fleming about the early planned residential areas of Kingsport. Maybe some of you people would actually live in some of the houses that are in those early planned residential. So this is the kind of thing we're trying to do. And we've got a lot of potential programs, a lot of people who are interested in making presentations. So, but we're always interested in new subjects. So <clears throat> step up and tell us what you'd like to hear about or that you'd be able to make a presentation about. And we're, we're, we're looking for all of you. So uh, that's kind of the story we have here. Uh, hope to see you here next month. <coughs> Is there any final comments from the from the group here, from Pearl or Pearl lookalikes or <laughs> people experienced with Pearl and other characters like that, which Pearl was in a family of characters. There were some other characters that were, we were related to her too as well. Oh. Anyway, any final question? If not, Thanks for being here. See you next month.